Well, welcome and good evening, wonderful dice of all alignments. I am Lunar D8, and this is Unrehearsed Creep Boston Narrations, Part 76. We're going to click on Random Story. Try click. Oh no, it's loading. I'm just. Eventually. It will eventually load. I got a walk on the dark again. That's, that's literally what I just read. Um. Why? Okay, a wall of advertisements. Can I scroll? What is all of this? Okay, we'll go past the ads. There was something down here. Somewhere. I, I, I swore I saw something on this site. Why is it highlighted that? I can't read. Okay. Top rated. Okay, that's what's down here. And more ads. So now I can't see that. And now it's loading that at fucking hell. Can I. You know, I was seeing the, the titles of some of the ads, and I actually thought they were up. Oh! Okay, well, I thought some of the ad titles were the names of creepy pasta stories, but they were not. But, okay, so here is the latest. Mm, I recognize this author, J.W. Smithworth. I read one of his stories recently, I just don't remember which one. It says the haunted counter of Cloudtireville. So it might be the one with the Trustville Bell. Trustville Bell thing. It's that it's got I don't think it has any ratings yet. Does it? I can't tell. Okay, I'm gonna try to load this so I can see if it has any ratings yet. Okay, it's only supposed to be four minutes long, that's good. Ratings, it has absolutely no votes. Okay. So the haunted count the the haunted candle of Cloutierville, written by J. W. Smithworth. As I close more advertisements. In August of twenty thirteen, I visited the small town of Cloutierville, Louisiana, to investigate the cellar of a small abandoned farmhouse. I was drawn to this farmhouse because in 1932, a woman was murdered here, and in 1933, her husband mysteriously vanished. While this situation alone was not of particular interest to me, the story surrounding it captured my attention. The following is the history of the haunted candle of Cloutierville, as I have come to understand it. In 1932, the farmhouse in Cloutierville, Louisiana, was owned by Adam and Emily Benoit. Adam was a farmer and a hard man. What? And not particularly likable one. Okay, so he's very ostensible. Okay. Although he did run a successful farm, he was an alcoholic and spent most of his nights at the local pub. Emily's wife was a quiet woman who did not have any social ties and spent all of her time at home alone. In June of 1932, Emily was found murdered in the cellar of her home. Police records state that she had been struck from behind by a blunt object. The police were able to determine that she did not die immediately. She crawled from that place of impact to the back of the cellar. In her outstretched hand was a candle holder, which would have been the only source of light in the dark and dingy cellar. Adam Benoit was listed as the primary suspect, but he had an alibi. He was with, her, with his friend that night at the pub. This friend was a local drunkard with less than stellar reputation, but nevertheless Adam's alibi was accepted, and the murderer Emily Benoit to this day remains unsolved. Early in February 1933, Adam Benoit was reported missing. He had not been seen at the pub for several days, and this was out of the ordinary for the recent widower. Police investigation led to the cellar in which Emily had been murdered. The investigating officer wrote that he heard a man sobbing, but he found the cellar empty. The only sign that anyone had been there was a single candle burning against the black of the back wall. The officer wrote that upon extinguishing the candle, the sobbing faded. The officer also found the word alone had been carved into the wall. 
The whereabouts of Adam Benoit went unsolved. He was never seen again. Okay. The following year, in 1934, the farmhouse was purchased by a man named Joan Morrill. When he was not seen or heard from for several weeks, a police officer again entered the cellar. They found the very same candle flickering dimly in the shadows. The police officers once again reported hearing a man sobbing and noted having seen the shadow of a woman flickering in the candlelight. When the candle was extinguished, the voices stopped and the woman disappeared. Written on the wall were the words, alone, alone, alone. John Morrow was never seen or heard from again, and the farmhouse to this day, still in his name, fell into disrepair. When I visited the farmhouse in 2013, I had every intention of exploring the cellar. The building had long been abandoned, so I broke the cellar lock and cautiously went inside. I found the room untouched. Dusty wine bottles filled the shelves and rusty old tools were piled in the corner. At the back of the cellar, I found a candle, covered in dust, burned down to the wick. All over the cellar I found one word, written over and over, across the walls, across the ceiling, across the shelves, alone, alone, alone. As I had expected, the word was written in two distinct styles, and I'd come prepared. I compared the writing to that of the journal of Adam Benoit and to the deed of John Morrill. The two styles were identical. This was the writing of the two men. In my curiosity, I lit the candle. Softly at first, and then, oh, I'd say, like, how do you light a candle at varying volume settings? The sobbing, that's what you're hearing. Okay. I was like, it's like, I, it's just, he said, I lit the candle, then softly at first, then louder. I'm like, how do you light a candle? quietly or loud but no it's the sobbing it's that's that's what we're describing sorry i heard sobbing the sound of lost hopeless men the weeping of those abandoned to an eternity of nothingness and in the shadows the figure of a woman slowly drifted into view dancing toward me i quickly extinguished the flame and left the cellar of course i brought the candle with me the haunted candle of cloutreville has sat quietly in my collection for several years now only once since that day did i light the candle I was in my attic amongst my collection, and almost immediately I heard the quiet sobbing of the poor souls lost in time. I quickly snuffed out the flame. The next day I carved into a rafter in my attic. I discovered a single word, alone. To the person who purchases the haunted candle holder of Cloutreville, the item will be meticulously packaged and delivered it with a copy of its history. I implore you to treat the item with care. I would not want anyone to suffer the same fate of its two previous victims. Thank you for reading this tall tale, and I wish you all the best. Sincerely, J. W. Smithworth. I wonder if there's any way I can just search by author. I could probably read more of his... Well, his name's actually read here in red. So maybe I'll actually just try to read more of his... I don't know. I just get the feeling like... I don't know. I like it when people are polite. And I just get the impression that the author of this story is just a very polite person. I don't know. I'm odd, I guess.